Hello everyone, my name is Adam Maripos Vox. Welcome back to another OBS multi-platform or OBS Studio tutorial. This is the new version of OBS which kicks butt, has a lot of cool new options, and overall is just pretty freaking awesome. If you missed the previous videos, this is a very long tutorial series running thing. Check the links in the description below. There's a video playlist with all the videos that I've made on it so far and probably ones that aren't public yet, as well as a bunch of helpful links that you can find out all the information you need to know to make some awesome videos or streams. Let's get started. This video is brought to you by TunnelBear. TunnelBear is an extremely fast and cheap, or even free, way to protect and hide your data and IP address from unwanted spying by hiding it behind a bear. TunnelBear also zaps away tracking cookies and allows you to tunnel through other countries to avoid censorship. It's fast, affordable, and even has a free option. Click the link in the description below to try it out for free today. This video is also brought to you by our contributors to our Patreon campaign. Our patrons contribute to our work via a small monthly contribution to help us build bigger and better projects, content, and collaborations, and they receive early access to our videos across all of our channels. Check the description or YouTube card now to check it out. In this video, we're going to cover scenes and sources. These boxes down here, these are essentially going to be the visual compositions that make up your live stream broadcast or your video recording. This will be, you know, your video sources, your images, etc. We already played around with this a little bit earlier when we were setting hotkeys to set up this nice little puppy image, but I'm going to show you how to really set up a live stream scene and source setup. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these. So the bulk of your stream and sources or scene and sources options for your stream or recording are down here at the bottom. You don't even need to go to a settings menu, assuming you have all the other settings set up correctly. And you can figure all those out by watching our previous videos. Uh, for the purposes of this, we're going to set up a couple different scenes here. And I'm going to go over this. Uh, this is actually going to cross over to two different videos. So in this video, we're going to cover basic video scene setup. And then we're going to go in more in depth into the specific sources in f a couple future videos right after this one. Let's start with sources. Sources are your individual video, well, sources. So, for example, you have display capture, which is previously called monitor capture. And I'll call it 1080p monitor. Click OK. And then you choose your monitor. So I'm going to just set that up. So this is one monitor. This is my 1080p monitor, which is hosting my other recordings and stuff at the moment. So that is a source, is a single video input. A scene is a group of sources, because for example, you might have that, but you might also have a image overlay. If I go to my stream files here, you might also have an overlay image. So a scene is a collection of those different overlays, and I use on my main streams a bunch of Twitch alerts and things like that to set up a pretty cool looking stream. So that is the difference between a, a scene and a source. I'm going to go ahead and mute those real quick. So to set up a source for your scene, well, to set up a scene, first click, you're going to have a default one, you can remove that, click the minus. So you have plus to add scenes, minus to remove scenes and then up and down arrows to change the order of your scenes. And then as we covered in the previous hotkeys video, you can actually use specific hotkeys hot to show those scenes. So let's add a new scene by clicking plus. And we're going to give it a title. We're going to call this monitor two because my 1080p monitor is my second monitor over here on my left. So we just added a scene. We'll go ahead and add some more scenes for future coverage. We'll have one called BRB, which is going to be for our Be Right Back image. We're going to have one for stream starting, for our stream starting soon. We're going to have one for web whoa, webcam only. We're going to have one for desktop only. And then we're going to have one for game plus overlays. So we've set up a bunch of different scenes here. One's just going to be a monitor, one's just going to be desktop, one's going to be a webcam, and then some images. We're going to do the images in a future video, but we'll cover the basics of setting up the desktop and webcam and stuff right here. All right, so let's set up a webcam first. Next, we mess with the sources. In our sources controls, we have plus to add a source, subtract to minus a source, or remove a source, up and down arrows to change the orders, and a gear icon to mess with individual source settings, which can be useful for troubleshooting or customizing your stream. 
So for our webcam only scene here, we're going to click webcam only, and we're going to click the plus arrow and go to video capture device. Video, well actually let's go over all the types here. You have an image, which is going to be a still image. You have a media source, which is going to be a video file. I will cover that in a future video, but you will want to make sure they're heavily compressed. You can add individual texts just on top of your screen. Display capture, which will capture your entire monitor. Window capture, which will capture specific videos. Game capture, which will hook into specific games like Fraps or DX Tori Wood and capture your games. This may or may not work for you or your games, depending on your setup. Video capture device, which is going to be your capture cards, your webcams, etc. Audio input capture to specifically add audio to a specific scene that you wouldn't want in the rest of your scenes via the mixer. And same thing for audio output capture. This can be useful for adding separate game sound and game video via separate capture card setups and very fancy settings like that. For a webcam, we're going to go to video capture device. We're going to call this webcam. Click OK. And it automatically picked up my webcam because it's my first option. But we have a few other options here as well. You can see we have a webcam preview right here. It's off to the side because it's on my streaming gaming monitor. And then we can deactivate it. We can activate it just in case you need to reset it because sometimes the webcams mess up. And then you have configure video. We click that. Pulls up the Logitech controller. We're not going to mess with that right now. Resolution frames per second type. You can either use the device default, which by default it uses a high resolution, well not high resolution, but a higher resolution square image, uh, which is, you know, pretty good for face cam. You don't need a full widescreen in image for face cam. So if you're doing a face cam, you're going to want a square in a corner. But since we're doing a full screen webcam, we're actually going to set up a custom one by choosing custom. Then under resolution, we're going to choose 1920 by 1080. Whoa. There we go. We get a full 1080p image. Frames per second, match output, except see it says it's unsupported because my webcam does not support 60 frames per second, so it auto selects 30 because that's the max my webcam supports. Then video format. You have all those, just go to any for the most part. Same thing with these. Default, just leave all of those on the default. If for whatever reason it's upside down, you can go vertical flip, but that's generally not a good recommended idea unless you're doing something specific. Then you can use Audio output mode, capture audio only, so it just automatically captures the audio to the stream, outputs it to your desktop, so it will play through your desktop speakers, but then it will also be controlled by your desktop audio slider down here, or output it, you have two different options for that. In most cases, you're gonna wanna use direct sound. You also have use custom audio device, and that's actually gonna be more helpful for when you're using a capture card, as with the capture card, you'll be able to set up a separate audio input for that for that device. We're not going to mess with that right now. So we'll click OK. And here we have our webcam preview. And then if you want to go back and change those settings, click that gear icon. There you go. Now that we have a source in the sources box, we also have an eye next to our source where it says webcam. If we click, if we click that, rather, we have muted the webcam. We have turned it off, essentially, for this scene. Now it's going to stay off until we click that again. This is also adjustable via the hotkeys as we covered before. You can individually mute sources now. So if you have it, say, set up as an overlay over your video, but you don't want it always shown, then you can set up a hotkey to mute that so that it turns off and on at specific intervals whenever you want it. That works out pretty well. All right, let's set up a desktop only capture. We're gonna add display capture. We're gonna call this main desktop. Click okay. And we're going to use this main desktop here, and then you can, which is my 4K monitor. And then you can choose whether or not it captures your mouse cursor. For some situations, you may not want it. For most of mine, I will want it, so I'll leave that on and click OK. Except now we run into an issue where since my monitor is a lot higher resolution than 1080p, we have this big O, you know, it, it, it's bigger than the screen. So how do we fix that? Well, immediately you'll notice that you have this red box around your set, around your display. Now, if you want to make something bigger, you can actually use this red box and drag it around. However, that can get messy if you're trying to make something smaller. So what you can actually do is right click it, and here you have a bunch of different options. You have transform and order. So you can either move it to the bottom if you have multiple sources in your scene, you can move it, you know, change the order. Or you can use transform and use fit to screen. And it's automatically going to fit it to the size of your screen. Pretty freaking useful. Now, there's another useful option here, and I'm going to go ahead and mute this so you don't see that repeating image. But there's another useful, op useful option here besides the rotation and flipping is the stretch to screen. 
So I covered this in a previous vanilla OBS tutorial. But it, using recording something like Five Nights at Freddy's with OBS, Five Nights at Freddy's, even if it shows on your screen as a widescreen recording, it's actually a square 4x3 recording. And so when you go to record it, it has black bars on the side. Well, you don't want that. So what you would choose if you have black bars is stretch to screen, and it will actually get rid of those black bars because it'll stretch it all the way to be the widescreen. I can't really simulate this right now, but that's what it looks like. Actually, I can simulate it because in our next setup, we're going to go ahead and add a game capture. So let me go ahead and run a Five Nights at Freddy's instance, and I'll show you what it's like. If I have it installed, I may not have it installed, and that'll be a problem. So go up, I'll open up Steam. All right, so if we add it as a game source, so right click in our game and overlay scene, right click, go to add or click the plus, and go to game capture, and we'll call this FNAF for Five Nights at Freddy's. Click OK. Then we... It says capture any full screen application. So it's automatically going to detect it. Or if we uncheck that, then we can choose which one it's going to do. Now, capture any full screen application makes your life easier because in theory it should automatically pick it up. But if you want to set up specific scenes for specific games, you'll want to do that manually. So we'll do that here just to be safe with Five Nights at Freddy's. So I'll choose Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and it'll have a bunch of options. Most of that you don't need to worry about. So I'll click OK. At the moment, it's going to show a black screen because I haven't pulled the game back up. So I'm going to pull that back up and then re-minimize it real quick. And as you can see here in the preview in the OBS here, it has just a small box of Five Nights at Freddy's. And if we stretch it out, we can, we can make it, you know, fill the screen here. But it's not going to take up the whole screen. We still have all this space over here. So then we right-click, transform, fit to screen and it's going to fit it, but then if we pull it back up, and then we pull it back up and see it, we still have the black bars. So, right click, transform, stretch to screen, now we have a widescreen recording. Don't abuse this, but it's very, very handy. All right, so we have our game capture, so let's add a couple overlays real quick. I'm gonna cover the technical details of like BRB screens and stream overlays and stuff, but I have a couple preset here that we're gonna cover just to show as an example for setting up our scenes. So I'm going to click plus and go to image, and I'm going to call this stream overlay. Click OK. Find your image file. I'm going to go to webcam overlay, tech, and then you have an option to unload the image when not showing. This will save you RAM, save you memory if you're having, you know, if you have a lower end computer. But it also may mean when you flip to the scene, that overlay is not present for a second while it reloads it. That's up to you whether or not you want to take that risk or try it out or just try it out for yourself and see what happens. And then we'll right click, well, we'll click that one and go to fit to screen. And then there we have our overlay. And then I'll click plus again, video capture device. We'll call this webcam. Click OK. Name's already in use because it's over there. So webcam. Since we want a square preview for our face cam, we'll leave that at device default. All of that should be OK. Click OK. And then we'll drag it over here in the corner and start lining it up with our overlay. Whee! That should be good. But now this is over top of the overlay. That's not what we want. So then click the face cam icon here and use the down arrow to put it below the overlay. Now when we click off, it's up under that little box and it, I have a face cam. So suddenly we have face cam for Five Nights at Freddy's. If you're not using an overlay, you don't got to worry about that. Just position it where you like and you're good to go. Now something to note compared to the original OBS and then I kind of screwed up right here when I was adding the face cam is they've replaced global sources with existing sources. And so to get face cam here, I actually had to remove it from the webcam box. So we're going to fix that. We're going to click plus and go to video capture device. But instead of adding a new webcam, we're going to add existing. And that's our face cam. Because when it was trying to add multiple instances of our webcam, it didn't like that. It was like, no, that, that already exists. Why would you do that? The only limitation of this, however, which creates a problem with the scenes I've set up here, although if you're just using a widescreen face cam that doesn't need to fit a theme or a setup, then you're good to go. But the only limitation of this is that you can't change the settings. So I can, I, I can you know, make that bigger and I can even tell it to stretch it, although that would look pretty bad. Yeah, that looks very, very bad. You don't really want to do that. Um, but if I go right here and tell it, you know, go into the properties and tell it to run at 1080p to fit the screen, well, that's 
feels very cropped in, but you know, 1080p to fit the screen. Then when I go back to this one, it's all screwed up because it's trying to run at 1080p as well because it's one instance. And so that can become kind of problematic. That was still an issue in previous versions of OBS anyway. But what you could do is just resize it and make sure you keep only to one side of your video. So that way you can just kind of hang it off screen there and then it fits in your overlay and you know resize it reposition your webcam and you still have it good to go so instead of global sources you have existing sources which is a lot more intuitive it just takes a little bit more finagling to get set up i do hope this video was helpful for you if it was be sure to smash that like button subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos all that jazz also, be sure to follow us over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash eposvox. That link will be in the description below. We've been picking up more streams, and once we finish our final move here, we're moving to an apartment. We're going to be streaming a ton, so be sure to follow us over on Twitch. And feel free to request whatever game you'd like to see. If you want to see us stream a game, we may very well stream it. Be sure to request it as well. And I will catch you in a future video. we got lots of these coming out. Be sure to check the links in the description below. There's tons of stuff down there. Thank you for watching. You've just watched another epic tech video from me, Epos Vox. Consider crushing that like button and subscribing to the channel. That way you never miss an upload. Also, check the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and hit up our Patreon campaign for early access to videos. See you in the next epic tech video.